In high school, I spent a lot of my free time reading math online and from books on my dad's bookshelf. One day, I came across a problem posed by a famous Russian mathematician, Gromov, working in Paris. This is the type of problem which is completely elementary to state, but seems to be expressing something fundamental which is yet to be understood. The mathematical theory of knots actually has its origins in physics. In the 1800s, Lord Kelvin had a theory of atoms, which proposed that different atoms were all small knots, and the different knot types correspond to the different elements in the periodic table. Some years later, a Scottish physicist, Tate, tabulated the simplest knots, starting with the unknot, the trefoil, and going on to more complicated knots. Mathematically, a knot is a closed loop in three-dimensional space. And the sort of string that it's tied of is infinitesimal. In particular, you can tie infinitely many possible knots. If you take any particular physical piece of rope, though, the number of knots you can tie is finite. This is something you can prove by pure thought without writing down any equations. It's essentially true because the length of the rope is finite and it has a definite thickness. And this is an example of how geometry, namely the length and the thickness of the rope, can control the topology, what type of knots you can tie. Gromov's question was about another geometric quantity called distortion, and asked whether you can tie all knots with a fixed bound on the distortion. Many years later, between junior and senior years of undergrad, I spent the summer traveling in the UK, and when I was in Bath, I remember very clearly I was walking in the botanical gardens at Royal Victoria Park, and um, I realized there was a way to use distortion to control the topology of a knot. It's not so difficult to see that controlling the distortion controls the number of intersections between a knot and certain surfaces intersecting the knot. Something a little bit more subtle, though, is that the number of intersections between the knot and certain surfaces in R3 can be used to control the topological type of the knot. Walking in nature and exercising definitely stimulates the brain to come up with lots of new ideas. And in fact, after I finished thinking about this problem on distortion, I became interested in another problem about symmetries of three-dimensional space and whether symmetry groups of three-dimensional space have to be continuous or whether they can be discontinuous, completely disconnected, discrete. And a key idea of how to address this problem came to me after going for a run near my home in North Carolina. Remember Tate, who tabulated knots? So he made a lot of empirical observations about knots from the knot tables. And these conjectures weren't proven until over 100 years later in the 1990s, when new knot invariants, such as the Jones polynomial, were discovered. Moreover, these conjectures, which had their origins in the physical theory, which we now know to be completely wrong, were actually solved by new invariants, which were later found out to have a very close connection to modern physics, quantum field theory. And um, it sort of really stimulated a lot of new progress and interest in knot theory and the connection to physics, which at the moment we're only beginning to understand.